Today on Family Talk. The legendary coach Vince Lombardi once said, leaders are made, they are not born. They are made by hard effort, which is the price which all of us must pay to achieve any goal that is worthwhile. Well, today's guest here on Family Talk is a prime example of this idea. He has worked hard to get where he is, but he has maintained his Christian faith even on the biggest stage all throughout. You are listening to Family Talk, a production of the James Dobson Family Institute. I'm Roger Marsh, alongside your host, psychologist and best-selling author, Dr. James Dobson. And doctor, we are now three weeks into the football season, and now is the perfect time for this interview. Tell us what we're going to hear today. Well, I am uh, so pleased that uh, we can feature one of my favorite conversations with retired NFL football coach Tony Dungy today. Uh, Tony is uh, best known as the the head coach of NFL teams, uh, including the Indianapolis Colts, and he won a Super Bowl with that team, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. While he was in the NFL, he became the first coach to defeat all 32 NFL teams. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's pretty good. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it's a very big accomplishment indeed. Uh, coach Dungy was also the first African-American coach to lead his team to a Super Bowl victory. And in 2016, he was also elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Uh, Now, Doctor, he retired from the NFL in 2009, but he hasn't been sitting on his hands on the sidelines. Coach Dungy has worked as an analyst for NBC's Football Night in America for nearly 10 years. He's also the national spokesman for organizations like Family First and All Pro Dads. And we'll hear a little bit more about his involvement in those ministries over the next couple of days. It was such a pleasure for me to meet this man and to spend time with him, and uh, I'm proud now to call him my friend. Uh, The conversation that we're about to hear was on the topic of his first book, Quiet Strength, The Principles, Practices, and Priorities of a Winning Life. And at that time, he was still coaching for the Colts, so our listeners will hear him make mention of that. He has so much wisdom to share with all of us, whether we're football fans, fans or not. Absolutely. That is a great point, Dr. Dobson. And now with that thorough introduction behind us, let's listen now to your conversation with Coach Tony Dungy here on Family Talk. Coach Dungy, I cannot tell you how excited I am to have you here. Well, thank you, Dr. Dobson, and I feel the same way. It's just I can't believe I'm here. Well, you have reason to uh, be concerned about children again, don't you? I do. My wife is a a tremendous mom and came from a big family, always wanted a big family. So uh, we uh, have a 22-year-old daughter who just recently graduated from college, but we also have uh, six, five, and one-year-olds at home Uh now. So uh, that second phase of the family is keeping us very busy. Well, you've devoted your professional life to uh, football, um, not only professional football, but college football before that, and high school and junior high. Uh, So football's been your life, uh, but that is not really what drives you, is it? It it really isn't. I have come to the understanding that athletics has been a big, big part of of my life, and it's fun, and it's what I do for a living. Uh, But my purpose uh, for a long time now has been to really glorify the Lord and use the talent that He's given me in football to do that. And uh, we've been been blessed uh, being on the biggest stage that you could possibly have with the Super Bowl last year. But but more importantly, to show people that uh, as a Christian, you can strive, you can work hard, you can shoot for excellence in your profession, uh, but still really your first priority is to honor the Lord. You have never uh, shrunk back from uh, telling people that you are a Christian. I mean, your witness has been... Uh, just so explicit. Uh, Tell me about the motivation for that. That motivation probably comes from my parents because uh, my mom used to tell me that all the time. You know, who you are is so much more important than what you do. And who you are really comes from from your relationship with the Lord. I I tell my team all the time, you're not going to see a different person when I come in here in this meeting room or on the practice field. I'm a Christian, and that's going to really 
take hold of everything that I do, including what we do out here on the football field. Mm. Well, let's talk about your family. Let's uh, let's go back to your parents to start with, because you you speak often about your father in much the same way that I do about uh, mine. You uh, loved him and revered him deeply, didn't you? My dad was really, really special. Uh, he was a teacher, and so teacher of physiology. I, I taught physiology, um, freshman college physiology. Uh, really enjoyed everything about nature, about the human body, about how God put things together, how it works. But uh, the big thing for me is it just seemed like any time I was home, weekends, you know, he was there, yeah. summer vacations, he was there. So we spent a lot of time together, and he led me uh, down the path he wanted me to go without well, mm-hmm. kind of making me think it was my idea. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I was following him, but I thought I was doing the leading. And, and uh, it was just really, really special. And he, he, was, uh, he was the person that guided me. Oh. And he died, I believe? Died in 2004. Uh, oh. We were just uh, finishing up our, our summer practice, and uh, he had leukemia and actually oh. had gotten it put in remission, uh, but got an infection and died very, very quickly, suddenly. And... Um, it, that was a that was a painful time for me. One of the first times that I experienced that that joy and pain at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you uh, learned something at the funeral that you had never known before. Explain what came out that he had never said yeah. to you. My dad was a very humble guy, and he didn't believe in blowing your, his own horn, and that came across to me as well. But uh, not many people knew he had a Ph.D., which he did. He never referred to himself as doctor. Um, but also at the funeral, we found out that he was a Tuskegee Airman. The African-American uh, pilots that weren't allowed to fly in the regular units uh, in, in World War II. And uh, he always told us about just not complaining about things, but, but going forward and doing what you could. And he said, well, there was a time when uh, we weren't allowed to fly and we just taught ourselves how to fly. And I never knew what that meant. And at his funeral, one of uh, his best friends talked about him being a Tuskegee Airman. Isn't that amazing? That uh, made an incredible contribution in World War II. He was a hero for being part of it, and he was honored to be chosen because that was a select group, and he never told you as close as you were to him. That tells you something about the humility of the man. Very, very humble. Uh, Lovey Smith, who, who coaches the Chicago Bears, he would sit, uh, when we worked at Tampa, he'd talk to Lovey every Friday. He'd come in for the games, and uh, when Lovey found out he was, had a Ph.D., he said, I've never heard him you know, uh-huh. say Dr. Dungy at all, and he was shocked, but that's, that's how my dad was. Well, speaking of things being historic, the, this Super Bowl was the first time ever that two African-American coaches were uh, competing against each other coaching the two teams, and that they both were Christians. It was a real awesome experience. We were both proud to be representing African Americans uh, coaching in that game. As you said, there were 41 Super Bowls, the first time it had ever happened. But I think we were both more pleased that we could represent Christ and let people know that that as Christians we could hold to those principles and still reach that excellence that that everyone's looking for. Uh, We had an opportunity to do an ad in the USA Today uh, on the back page on Friday, and it pointed people towards uh, a website. If you want to know more about what is really the ultimate, uh, you could go to this website and learn about Christ, and that, that was probably the most awesome thing to come out of the whole weekend. That is uh, what we admire most about you, Coach, is that you keep first things first. And uh, you obviously had the heritage for it. Uh, and we've talked a little bit about your dad. Tell us about your mom. My mom was a teacher also and very, very special. She taught public speaking, and she taught that as an elective course because she wanted everybody in the school to have an opportunity to have a class from her if they chose. And I can remember she just treated every individual person so special. Uh, but she was a great, great Christian lady. She taught Sunday school, and that probably was the biggest heritage to me because she would yeah. practice her lessons on Thursday oh, yeah. night. <laughs> and I, I learned Bible stories before I could even read. Uh, I, uh-huh. I knew uh, a lot of Bible history and stories from her, and it was just an awesome way to start, start a life. Yeah. And you lost her also a couple of years ago. Yes, at the end of the 2001 football season. Uh, she had diabetes and was in a wheelchair and, and fought those effects for a long time. And uh, her, her passing 
was a little more joyful because uh, she was hurting, you know, at the end yeah. of her life, and we knew that she was going to heaven. And so as much as we missed her, it still felt like, okay, mm-hmm. well, my mom's in heaven now. How about your dad? Was he a Christian? Yes, and, um, you know, that one was just harder because it was unexpected. Yes. Um, my mom's we knew was coming. Uh, my dad's was very, very sudden. So, um, but they, they both had a great heritage. My, my dad's father was a, a minister, and that's where I first heard the gospel preached and, and hit my grandfather's church. Uh, so coming up in that environment was, I feel, very, very blessed. Mm-hmm. Uh, how, uh, how early did you come to know Christ, and in what way? I probably accepted Christ as a five or six year old, uh, very, very young. I heard the minister you know, give the, the gospel and my mom had always talked about if you want to go to heaven, you accept Christ into your life. So that was an easy decision for me. If you want to go to heaven, here's what you, you do. But uh, after that, I think I fell into the, the way that a lot of young boys do. Um, school was important in, in my household, but sports became really important. And I really went down that path where I wanted to be a good player, I wanted to be a good student, and that really took first place for a, for a long time. And not that I rebelled or did anything crazy, but I didn't really have Christ where he should have been in my life, uh, probably through junior high and high school and college. Uh, but I had that salvation and had that assurance from the time I was a young boy. Well, how did you uh, come really back? How did you make the deeper commitment? It's very interesting. I was 21 years old and with, with the Pittsburgh Steelers, and my second year there, well, my first year there, I actually ran into this group of guys who were really just tremendous Christians. And I watched them, and I realized that there was something a little different. Just they had so much energy. They practiced hard all the time. But the way they talked, they related to people, their families. So, wow, this is different. Um, And those guys took me under their wing. And that's when I began to understand about growing, reading, trying to really realize what God could do with your life if you turned it all over to him, not just for salvation, but the way you lived. Then my second year, I got sick in training camp. I got mononucleosis, and my roommate, Donnie Shell, you know, told me that, that hey, here's what's happening. Um, you claim to be a Christian, but God is really testing it if he's in first place in your life or is football in your career. And at that moment, I, I, it really convicted me, and I said, you know what? I, I say that God is, but I'm so concerned about my sport and my body Maybe I'm fooling myself a little bit. And from that point on, I really understood. And I said, you know what, if, if I recover from this or if I don't, uh, I'm going to really have things in the right priority. And at that point, I decided that I was going to put Christ first mm-hmm. uh, in, in front of my career and keep him, keep him first. It shows, I'll tell you that. Now, you and Lauren have been married for 25 years. We have. Yeah, was she a Christian when you married her? She was. She was actually attending a church. Uh, I was a stand-in speaker uh, uh-huh. on a Father's Day breakfast, and the, the minister said, hey, if you'll sit with me so I can introduce you, I was standing in for another one of our players. And after I finished my Father's Day talk, he said, you know, there's a girl in our, our congregation you really ought to meet. I tried <laughs> to kind of blow him off. That's dangerous. But, yeah, he, yeah, he was persistent. And, uh, and we met, and we started going to church on Sundays um, in the summer. And uh, we just started hanging out together, and uh, about uh, four months later, we decided that, that we should be married. And, and we've been, been married 25 years. But she um, really, really had that same spirit. I could tell she wanted to raise her family in a Christ-like way and wanted to live that way. And I knew we were going to be a perfect match. Uh, you all have had uh, six children. You, you adopted three. And uh, and Lauren has given birth to three. We, uh, Do I have that right? We have three older children that uh, 22, uh, J- James was one year behind Tierra, and then Eric is 15. And then we have our second set uh, that, wow. that we adopted. Um, Jordan is six now, Jade is five, and we've got uh, Justin who just turned one. You ought to be listening to me, Coach. <laughs> I have. <laughs> I have. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you enjoying the second time around? It, it's been, we feel like we're a little bit better prepared, number one. I don't know that I have as much energy as I had uh, when I was in my 30s, but uh, it's been great. And the, and the second group uh, is so special uh, because 
you just understand that they are a gift. I think sometimes you, you take it for granted uh, early on in, in raising children. We knew how special our, our first three were, but uh, we really feel like the Lord placed these last three with us uh, for a reason, and um, we, we certainly feel they're very, very special. Well, it is uh, such a thrill. I should uh, let people know who tuned in late. We're talking to Coach Tony Dungy, who is the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts, uh, the winner of the Super Bowl, uh, Super Bowl 41. Uh, that must be a thrill, uh, Tony, to uh, see all of your labors uh, pay off like that. It was a thrill. I uh, went to Super Bowl thirteen on, on the winning team as a player when I was with the Steelers. But a, as a coach, you really get to understand everything that goes into it. You realize how hard everyone in the organization works. Uh, you realize how tough it is to get there. So it, it was an awesome thrill. Oh, and now you've written uh, the book, uh Quiet Strength. It has just come out. I have not uh, read it yet, but I look forward to it. And uh, it is really your story. It's really about your life, what you care about, what you've tried to do, uh, the priorities that are there, and uh, the principles as the subtitle uh, reads. Uh, Tell us about why you wrote that book. I really wanted to write it uh, for football fans who uh, would be interested in the story of how you get to a Super Bowl, but to allow them to see that uh, the Super Bowl isn't the most important thing. And that, that for me, my family was very important. Uh, my relationship with Christ was very important. And that those things uh, really took first place in my life. And that winning the Super Bowl was part of that, but certainly not the most important thing. Uh, how much uh, uh, freedom do you have to share your faith uh, in professional football and especially with the Colts? Well, fortunately, uh, in professional football, you have a lot of freedom. We don't have to worry about uh, being a state-operated school like yes. a lot of the universities. Uh, I can say what I want to say. I'm the boss, and uh, you know that helps. And, and it does help when you have owners who understand that. And Jim Irsay has been phenomenal. He, that's the reason he hired me. Uh, mm-hmm. He left me a message on, on my recording machine. He said, I want you to be our coach because you believe the same things I do, and this is going to be an important mesh. Oh, really? So that, that part has been uh-huh. phenomenal, and Jim has given me uh, tremendous backing, tremendous support, and I do have the ability to, to say what I want to say. I'm very careful about uh, how I give that message in our locker room because I don't want players to feel like they have to believe the same thing that I do, but they know how I feel. And, do you uh, pray with your team? We do pray. We have uh, chapel services for the players. We have team Bible studies. They're not mandatory, but uh, we encourage the guys. I put it right on the schedule. Uh, I, I, I set that out for them. And then we have a prayer pregame and postgame. And uh, we've not had one, one player that wouldn't partake in that in the time I've been with the Colts. I sense that from a distance, but it's uh, wonderful to hear you say it uh, because uh, – when it all comes down to it, it's the relationship with Christ that matters. It, it really is, and and I want the players to understand that. I want our community to know that that um, you know all of this Super Bowl wins and and victories, it, it's great, and we want to do our job well. But it is certainly not the most important thing. Coach, uh, I want to be very sensitive to your personal situation here, and so you. Um, let me go only as far as you're comfortable with it. But uh, you lost a son to suicide, uh, James. He was 18 years of age. And the way you handled that and the things you said about it uh, touched me deeply and many other people as well. Uh, and yet that was an incredible loss, wasn't it? It was a very, very uh, tough experience, the worst that I've been through. But the the nation did support us, including you. We got a letter from you and Mrs. Dobson. It was just just wonderful. Uh, But the thing for me, if I had not been a Christian, I don't think I could have made it through uh, because the thing that that kept us going, my wife and I, was the fact that we knew our son had accepted Christ. He was going to heaven, and uh, we were going to see him again. And uh, in, in spite of all the pain and all the hardships, that was what kept resonating with us. Uh, we are going to see him again. We do have some hope. On behalf of other parents who've experienced that uh, or fear they will go through it, uh, what uh, advice do you offer them? Did you see it coming? 
We did not see it coming, and I have talked to uh, a number of parents over the last 18 months in the same situation, and most did not see it coming. That's the unbelievable thing to me. Uh, these are, especially the boys, are high achievers. They're doing great things, and all of a sudden, uh, it, it does come out of left field. And, and what it tells me is just they're, they're under tremendous stress. They're under different pressures from the world. And sometimes they don't want to share those w- with their parents. Mm-hmm. Frequently, when a youngster is under such pressure and is contemplating suicide, they show an agitation. But when they finally decide they're going to do it, the the mood often lightens up. So the parents have no clue whatsoever of what's going on. Once they've decided this is what, what's going to happen, then they're no longer struggling with it. The decision has been made. And, uh, and so that is what makes it so dangerous because you just don't know what's going on behind those eyes. Was that the, the case with James? It, it was for us and, and, as I say, for a number of people that I, I've talked to and uh, the big thing that, that we've learned from it is you just try to keep those lines of communication open and uh, constantly pray. Yeah. That's what you can do. Well, it's a pleasure uh, having you here today, uh, Coach, and uh, we want to talk to you some more. We want to talk about football next time. We've been talking about your family, uh, but uh, I'd like to know a little more about how uh, the early days went, uh, how you got into football in the first place. I think it went back to junior high, but we'll talk about that. And then on through college, you were very, very successful in college, and from there into the pros and into what we see uh, today. Uh, but uh, let's uh, pick up next time if we can, and uh, we will uh, discuss uh, that subject. Thank you so much for uh, making this journey. You're a very, very busy man. You didn't have time to come here, and you did, and I am delighted to get better acquainted with you. I knew I was going to like you, and it's true. So uh, it's been a pleasure having you well, here. thank you. It's been a real pleasure and a real honor to be here. And uh, one of the questions Questions I want to ask you next time is how can our listeners pray for you? Because you're in a high pressure, visible, uh, fishbowl kind of responsibility, and I'm sure you could use our prayers and our concern. Well, I'd be glad to talk about that because I do. I rely on those prayers and, and have gotten prayed for from people all over the country, and and believe me, it makes a difference. Uh, Give our regards uh, to Lauren, and next time you bring her here, I don't know if you can get her here for tomorrow's program, but uh, in the future, I'd love to meet her. Blessings to you. Thank you, sir. I'm Roger Marsh, and I hope you enjoyed part one of Dr. Dobson's conversation with Coach Tony Dungy here on Family Talk. Visit today's broadcast page at drjamesdobson.org for information on how you can get plugged into Coach Dungy's many organizations. There you'll also see links to his books, including the basis for this program, the book called Quiet Strength. You'll find all that content and much more when you're on our broadcast page at drjamesdobson.org. While you're on our site, be sure you also click onto our insightful blog tab as well. We have numerous entries from Dr. Dobson, Dr. Tim Clinton, and several of our past radio guests as well. Now, our bloggers focus on content and relatable issues such as parenting, marriage, faith, and culture. It's our goal here at Family Talk to support you in any area in which you are finding a bit of struggle. So take some time and read through some of our uplifting blogs when you go to drjamesdobson.org. Another way you can stay connected with our ministry is by following Family Talk on social media. Find our pages when you search for Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. Our various profiles focus on blessing you and your family through engaging and inspiring content. You can easily listen to past broadcasts. You can read engaging articles from us and just enjoy the scriptures that we post as well. Stop subjecting yourself to the filth that's online at so many different sites. Fill your day with God-honoring material. Go now and follow us on social media. Just search for Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. You'll be glad you did. Well, we've come to the end of today's program. Be sure to join us again tomorrow as Dr. Dobson continues his conversation with NFL Hall of Fame coach Tony Dungy. He'll share how he relied on God through the ups and downs of his football career. It's an encouraging program that you won't want to miss coming your way next time right here on Dr. James Dobson's Family Talk. 
This has been a presentation of the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute. This is James Dobson again. Before we go, I'd like to remind you that Family Talk is a listener-supported program. If you've enjoyed this broadcast, we'd appreciate your helping to keep us on the air. As you know, we talk about everything from religious liberty to the sanctity of human life and raising boys and girls, among others. Uh, These are the passions of our hearts, and I hope they are for you, too. Thank you so much for listening and for being part of this ministry. For more information, go to drjamesdobson.org. Hi, I'm Dr. Tim Clinton for the James Dobson Family Institute. Who inspires you on matters of faith, family, and culture? If you don't already get it, sign up for Dr. Dobson's monthly newsletter at drjamesdobson.org. Each month, you're going to receive insight and news that impacts your family and solid advice that you can trust. Whether it's wisdom for parents, tips for building a lasting marriage, or discernment on issues your family may be facing, you're going to find direction, encouragement, and more every month. Visit drjamesdobson.org and sign up for that monthly newsletter today. And again, that's drjamesdobson.org. You'll be glad you did.